Now, what do you see in the gross findings? If you compare it with the nevus, which is a benign proliferation, you will see in case of melanoma, there's a striking variation in the color. So this color is one color. This color is of separate color. This is of separate color. So there will be a striking variation in the shades of black, brown, red, dark, blue, and gray. So there's a variation in the color. Very important, the zones of white or flesh colored hyperpigmentation also appear sometimes. So not only hyper, sometimes hyperpigmentation can also occur. Now very importantly, if you look at the borders, unlike the nevus which was completely round and well defined, the borders over here are quite irregular as we can appreciate over here. They have an irregular border as we can see over here. Okay. The borders are quite irregular and notched unlike the smooth round and uniform borders of melanocytic nevus. So this is the malignant mel melanoma. Okay, Both the radial and the vertical growth phase can be seen. So you can see the tumor over here, they are going towards the radial phase as we can appreciate over here. Whereas this is the vertical phase wherein the tumor is growing downwards. This has no, you know, no potential for metastasis, but this is having a potential for metastasis. Okay. Today we are going to discuss about one of the last topics in the competencies that is melanoma. It is one of the deadliest of the skin cancers and is strongly linked to acquired mutations caused by ultraviolet radiations in sunlight. Most of them they occur in the head, neck and in the lower extremities. Rarely it might involve the palm, sole, subungal region as well. Why is the importance of this melanoma? Because if it is detected early, it can be completely cured. What are the other sites apart from the skin where melanoma can be there? Oral region, anogenital mucosal surface like oropharynx, GI tree, genito, urinary tract, esophagus, meninges, as well as the UV of the eye. Overwhelming majority of the melanomas, they occur after puberty. Now 10 to 15% of melanomas are autosomal dominant which are associated with germline mutations in the genes that regulate the cell cycle. Okay, Overwhelming majority of them are sporadic and a risk factor being ultraviolet radiation damage because of sun exposure. Most common is sun exposed surface that is the upper back in men and back and legs in case of women. Now, lightly pigmented individuals are at greater risk as compared to darkly pigmented individuals. Why? Because in lightly pigmented individuals, they have less amount of melanin. So basically, they have a greater damage. Okay. Uh, 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 they have a greater damage from the sun exposure. Okay. As compared to darkly, indivi uh, darkly pigmented individuals. Now, periodic severe sunburns early in life are the most important risk factor. Also, it is to be kept in mind the fact that apart from sunlight, also there are other predisposing factors since melanoma is also occurring in dark skinned individuals as well. So we have to understand a very important pathway. Okay, so what all is happening in this pathway, we have to understand the molecular pathogenesis of melanoma. So basically, if you see a growth factor over here is attaching to this particular cell membrane, okay, and is activating the RAS pathway, by which we are having two important pathways. One is the uh, BRAF pathway and another is PI3K AKT mTOR pathway. Okay, so both this pathway normally if you see they are responsible for survival and proliferation of the cells. Okay, so they are responsible for survival and they are also causing growth and proliferation. So these are usually the growth pathways. So whenever there is anything wrong or dysregulation of this pathway, so there will be excessive proliferation and excessive survival of the cells leading to this deadly tumor. So driver mutations uh, uh, which are affecting three important pathways okay in case of melanoma the first pathway is the cell cycle control pathway second is the pro growth pathway which is common in sporadic cases and third is the telomerase activation pathway so the first pathway that is the cell cycle control pathway very importantly we have to understand over here that uh, CDKN2A gene mutation is seen in 40% cases of autosomal dominant melanoma and 10% cases of sporadic melanoma. CDKN2A encodes three important tumor suppressor genes. One is your P15 INC 4B, P16 that is INC 4A and P14 ARF. Okay. Now P16 normally what they do, they inhibit the cyclin dependent kinase 4 and 6. Okay. N remember, so they are inhibiting the cyclin dependent kinase and this cyclin dependent kinase 4 and 6, they are responsible for progression of the cell cycle. Okay. So normally the pre P16 is going to inhibit this uh, cyclin dependent kinase and thus it is allowing the function of the RB tumor suppressor gene to block the cell cycle in the G1 phase. So normal the function of the P16 is what? It is to hold the cell cycle at the G1 phase. It is not going to allow the cell 
cycle to continue. Similarly, the P14 is enhancing the activity of another tumor suppressor gene that is the P53. Okay, the P53. How P14 is basically inhibiting the function of the MDM2 and by that they are enhancing the activity of the P53 tumor suppressor gene. Normally, MDM2 if you see it is uh, basically um, it is inhibiting the P53 but because P14 is inhibiting MDM2 so therefore it is enhancing the activity of P53 okay so the net effect is increased melanocytic proliferation so the first pathway is cell cycle control pathways remember that 40% of the autosomal dominant melanoma is having CDKN2A gene mutation and 10% of sporadic cases is also having. So what is the importance of CDKN2A gene? It is basically encoding three two important tumor suppressor gene. One is P15, P16 and P14 ARF. Over here, the P16 is important as it is, uh, uh, P16 is supporting the activity of RB tumor suppressor gene and P14 is, support, uh, is supporting the activity of P53 tumor suppressor gene. So normally the P16 is going to fa facilitate the RB tumor suppressor gene and P14 is going to facilitate the P53 tumor suppressor gene. So if there is any mutation involving the the, the generation of these proteins P16 and P14, then ultimately what is going to happen there, it will lead to increased and unregulated proliferation of the melanocytes. The second pathway is the pro-growth growth path pathways. These are more common in these sporadic cases. So there's an aberrant increase in the RAS signaling and the PI3K AKT signaling. So this is the pathway as we can see, there is a RAS signaling. There's an excessive activity of the RAS as well as the PI3K AKT activity, this is going to be increased. Okay. Secondly, not only this, they can be activating mutation in the BRAF pathway and this is present in 30 to 40 percent cases of melanomas are having activating mutations of the BRAF pathway. That is this pathway will also be increased in case of melanoma. Now, activating mutations of NROS is present in 15 to 20 percent of additional cases. Now, BRAF mutations is often accompanied by loss of function mutation of the P10 tumor suppressor gene. So, whenever a mutation in the BRAF is present, along with that, a mutation in P10 is also present and normally P10 is a tumor suppressor gene. Okay, so mutation in the P10 tumor suppressor gene is often associated with the BRAF mutation. Now, melanomas in non-sun exposed areas, they show mutations upstream of the RAS in the receptor tyrosine kinase pathway. Okay, very, very important thing that in those individuals who are not exposed to the sunlight, melanomas in those individuals, basically, they are having mutations at this level, at the receptor tyrosine kinase level. Okay, in individuals who are dark skinned or in non-exposure to the sunlight, melanoma develops because of mutation in this particular pathway. Third is the telomerase activation. So I need not say what is the function of the telomerase. I al already explained to you that normally the function of telomerase enzyme is to maintain the chromosomal ends and it prevents the process of aging. So normally the activity of telomerase is regulated. But in case of uh, melanoma, there will be an excessive activity of this telomerase and because of which they will have tumor-like property. So telomerase activation can be seen in sporadic melanomas. Uh, now mutation in the promoter that is the TERD gene activates the telomerase in nearly 70% of the tumors making the TERT the most common gene to be mutated. So TERT is basically the gene which is encoding the telomerase enzyme and activating mutations in the TERD gene is seen in classically 70% of the melanoma. So it is the most common gene to be mutated in a mel melanoma. It acts normally the TERT is acting as an antidote to senescence means normally it is maintaining uh, the chromosomal ends and it basically doesn't allow aging to occur but this activity is also regulated normally okay now what do you see in the gross findings if you compare it with the nevus which is a benign proliferation you will see in case of melanoma there is a striking variation in the color so this color is one color this color is of separate color this is of separate color so there will be a striking variation in the shades of black brown red dark blue and gray so there's a variation in the color very important the zones of white or flesh colored hypopigmentation also appears sometimes so not only hyper sometimes hypopigmentation can also occur now very importantly if you look at the borders unlike the nevus which was completely round and well defined the borders over here are quite irregular as we can appreciate over here they have an irregular border as we can see over here. Okay. The borders are quite irregular and notched unlike the smooth round and uniform borders of melanocytic nevus. Now, 
coming to the pathogenesis of malignant nevus now always remember one thing about the malignant nevus that we have already read that there is a benign nevus there is a dysplastic nevus showing some kind of atypia then if you are looking at a melanoma or at a malignant lesion of the skin remember they are having different types of phases one is a radial phase wherein okay they are growing but majorly they are growing singly and they are going radially okay so they are growing radially and there's a vertical growth phase wherein the lesion they grow more downward now as i told you whenever any kind of lesion is growing downward there will be more elevation so the lesion will become nodular in nature and then there's a metastatic phase of melanoma where they will show metastasis to the lungs liver and the brain so we will first see the radial growth phase so it is describing the horizontal spread of the tumor cells within the epidermis and the superficial dermis now this, this tumor they lack the capacity to metastasize in the radial growth phase they do not have any capacity to metastasize and they have various clinical pathological you know classes so radial phase of melanoma can have different types one is lentigo maligna usually presenting as a very indolent lesion on the face of older men and they may remain in this phase for decades superficial spreading variety which is the most common type usually involving the sun exposed skin acral or mucosal lentiginous variety it is unrelated to sun exposure now this is a radial growth phase wherein you can see dysplastic pleomorphic melanocytic cells the malignant melanocytes as we can appreciate but they are growing these tumor cells are growing in a radial manner okay along so they are superficially spreading variety so you can see the radial growth phase showing irregular nest and single cell growth of melanoma cells within the epidermis now the vertical growth phase as i told you there's a two phases one's a radial one's a vertical now after a variable and unpredictable period of time melanoma can shift from the radial to the vertical growth phase during which the tumor cells will invade downward into the deeper dermal layers as an expansile mass and this phase is heralded by the appearance of nodules so if the lesion was plain now the lesion will become nodular why because they have gone deep into the dermis and it correlates with the emergence of a tumor subclone which is having a metastatic potential so the horizontal growth uh, growth phase is not having a metastatic potential whereas the vertical growth phase is having a metastatic potential unlike nevus remember neurotization is not present in the deep invasive portion neurotization means when these tumors are going into the deeper layers of the dermis this is the dermis for example in nevus they were becoming spindle shaped but in case of melanoma they will remain epithelioid and they will have a malignant phenotype okay the probability of metastasis in such lesions it correlates with the depth of the invasion which is a distance from the superficial epidermal granular cell layer so from the epidermal granular cell layer you have to uh, you know calculate the distance to the deepest intradermal tumor and this thickness is called as breslow's thickness so it is a distance from the superficial epidermal granular cell layer to the deepest intradermal tumor uh, uh, cell layer now there are other factors so this is the most important uh, you know predictive factors for metastasis that is the depth of the invasion other factors includes number of mitosis it also includes ulceration okay so this is the malignant melanoma okay both the radial and the vertical growth phase can be seen so you can see the tumor over here they are going towards the radial phase as we can appreciate over here whereas this is the vertical phase wherein the tumor is growing downwards this has no you know no potential for metastasis but this is having a potential for metastasis okay okay now important histological points remember individual melanoma cells are considerably larger they will have a large nuclei with irregular contours the chromatin is clumped at the periphery of the nuclear membrane so these are important histological points favoring the diagnosis of melanoma very important the most important point they have a very prominent red eosinophilic nucleoli a tiny fraction of atypical lesions they fall in a histological gray zone and have been termed melanocytic tumors of uncertain malignant potential now lentigo maligna this is also one variety as we are seeing this is one of the varieties of the radial variety of melanoma usually they occur in the sun exposed areas of elderly individuals most commonly in the cheeks so they are fat flat and they are slow growing microscopically they will show proliferation of atypical melanocytes in the basal layer distributed individually as well as in nest now proliferation of the atypical basal melanocytes in the deep portions of the retinas can simulate invasion but usually over here invasion is not there 
when it is confined in the epidermis it is called as lentigo maligna it is a form of melanoma in situ when a dermal component is present then the term lentigo maligna melanoma is used this is lentigo maligna if you can appreciate over here the cells are present in the basal layer as we can appreciate okay the cells are appreciable in the basal layers as we can appreciate the tumor cells are appreciable in the basal layers now over here this is the uh, 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 diagnosis if you see there's a lentiginous proliferation is there as you can appreciate okay we can lentiginous proliferation of the follicles lentiginous proliferation along the dermo epidermal ju ju junction we can appreciate over here this is also a diagnosis of lentigo maligna okay and remember usually if you see these are the dermal melanophages they have taken in the melanin but the proliferation is there basically at the dermo epidermal junction so this is the classical case of a lentigo maligna superficial spreading variety which is again the radial phase only it is the most common type okay it is it was also known as pegetoid melanoma because as it is spreading along the uh, superficial epidermal layer it can occur anywhere in the body it has a variegated appearance as i told you they will have a different types of appearance unlike the nevus they are slightly elevated not that much but they are little bit elevated the white areas are corresponding to areas of spontaneous regression the deep invasion generally accompanied by appearance of nodule on the surface in that case they have shifted to the vertical phase this is the superficial spreading variety is just like the pegetoid disease of the breast these cells are also large pegetoid and they are spreading along the the surface superficial epi um, epithelial surface so pegetoid appearance of melanocytes in the superficial spreading variety of malignant melanoma this is another image showing trans epidermal migration so along the epidermis only these pegetoid melanoma cells they are spreading if we can appreciate over here individual necrosis of neoplastic melanocytes can be seen as you can appreciate individual cells are showing necrosis also some of the melanin has reached the horny layer so called pigmented parakeratosis some of the melanin has reached in the upper layers as well now the nodular variety of melanoma if you can see over here the cells are growing into and inside the dermis so the vertical phase is there which is heralded by the presence of nodule there is no radial growth phase over here the epidermis is thin as you can appreciate and this area you can see it has showing ulceration so often there might be ulceration as well there is no in situ melanoma means invasion has already taking place the dermal component is presenting as a cohesive nodule as you can see there are many different different nodules they are presenting as cohesive nodules and the tumor is having a pushing border it is trying to push it can affect all body surface and is usually of short duration and occurs in younger age group that is the nodular variety of melanoma this is a massive nodular melanoma as we can appreciate from this diagram so they will have a very deep dermal component as we can appreciate now there is an acral lentiginous melanoma which is occurring typically in the uh, in your skin it is seen in the palm soles subungual or beneath the the nail bed and the mucocutaneous junctions of the oral nasal cavity and the anus it has an intradermal com intraepidermal component of lentiginous type which in many respects are similar to lentigo maligna but in contrast to the latter remember the intraepidermal melanocytes tends to be dendritic and they are quite bizarre okay the involved epidermis is markedly hyperplastic rather than atrophic and papillary dermis in this region is quite inflamed and they are widened so this is how you can differentiate this from lentigo maligna as well this is the acral lentiginous melanoma as you can appreciate so what did i tell you over here it is hyperplastic so the overlying epidermis that you can see it is quite hyperplastic as we can appreciate over here okay and the cells are quite bizarre the swells are quite bizarre and there is a lot of inflammation in this area as you can appreciate the cells are quite bizarre and the and there is a lot of inflammation now other melanoma types can be there for example this is a trabecular variety of melanoma this is your variety of melanoma showing spindling okay then there can be some variety containing anaplastic tumor cells or some of them showing mixoid changes this is your mixoid changes as we can appreciate in this diagram okay then there are there can be some with a nevoid pattern okay as you can appreciate this is a nevoid pattern of growth okay it is showing polypoid configuration can you see they are looking like they are nevus they are benign okay they can have a polypoid variety and high power view of the same is showing very minimal amount of uh, atypicality is very minimal so more or less they are looking very benign okay 
so this tumor recurred locally and it eventually metastasized so sometimes melanoma can have a benign appearance we call it as the nevoid growth pattern so these are some of the other patterns some other pattern is a desmoplastic pattern wherein there is a lot of fibrosis taking place this is your desmoplastic pattern of melanoma now what are the prognostic factors over here that we will see this is one of the very important mcqs prognostic factors of a melanoma so most important is your breast lobe thickness or the tumor thickness from the granular cell layer below okay to the deepest level in the dermis and ulceration okay so both of these are the most important prognostic factor in melanoma but if you have to choose one you will choose breast lobe thickness mitotic activity okay more than equal to 1 per mm2 has a bad prognosis females have a better 5 year survival rate as compared to males younger age is associated with more favorable prognosis in males but not in females pregnancy has no statistical difference in pregnancy anatomical location remember scalp mandibular uh, area midline of trunk upper medial thighs hands feet popliteal fossa and genitalia are all high risk sites but remember sub angle be beneath the nail bed melanoma beneath the nail bed notoriously they have a very bad prognosis clinical pathological type remember earlier lentico maligna melanoma had a better prognosis okay and nodular melanoma was thought to have a worse prognosis superficial melanoma is thought to have an intermediate prognosis now according to the current guidelines they say that this does not matter once the depth of invasion is taken into account so breast lobe level of thickness of the depth of invasion is the most important prognostic factor more important than the morphology of the tumor so whether it be lentigo maligna nodular or superficial melanoma doesn't matter okay once you take the depth of invasion into consideration that becomes the most important entity now acral lentiginous uh, uh, melanoma always have an aggressive prognosis because of its propensity for deeper invasion and ulceration okay. now uh, other uh, prognostic factors cytological features so, coming at the individual tumor level whether it be spindle shaped or epithelial doesn't make a difference cell proliferative activity role is not clear yet now dermal inflammatory infiltrate dense inflammatory infiltrate has a better prognosis increased lymphocytes and plasma cells okay if it is presence uh, then it is having a good prognosis but increased amount of plasma cell is associated with increased risk of lymph node metastasis regression regression may be associated with an increased risk of lymph node metastasis but again the role is controversial usually having a bad prognosis angiotropism means melanoma cells along the external surface of blood vessels it is a predictor of local recurrence microscopic satellite the tumor nest greater than 50 micrometer that is separate from the main tumor mass is highly associated with lymph node metastasis metastasis in sentinel lymph node again carries a bad prognosis so these are all very important prognostic factors for melanoma now what are the warning signs of melanoma you have a b c d e now normal remember lesion is symmetric okay whereas in melanoma it will become asymmetric borders normally they are even but in melanoma the borders will become uneven the color if you see is a one color in normal or benign lesion but in melanoma you will have multiple colors the diameter is smaller than 1/4 of an inch the diameter is larger than 1/4 of an inch ordinary mole if you see they are evolving okay the evolution is not that much but they start to change in size shape color in case of a melanoma so this a b c d of melanoma are the important warning signs of melanoma now this is about the the breast lobe thickness as i told you it is the thickness from the granular layer of the epidermis to the deepest layer that is what is the breast lobe thickness and there is another thickness that is called as the clark's level which is uh, indicating the anatomical level of the invasion wherein the level 1 is indicating in situ melanoma level 2 is invasion into the papillary dermis level 3 is showing throughout the papillary dermis level 4 is into the reticular dermis and level 5 is going into the subcutaneous tissue okay so very important these are the two important levels breast lobe thickness and clark's level now now there are some uh, some melanoma looks look alike so they are looking like melanoma but they are not melanoma for example seborrheic keratosis it has a dark pigmentation irregular borders and some variation of color okay but uh, uh, horn cyst will help us to make the diagnosis clinically so presence of the keratin horn if you see a lot of keratin material present clinically will help us to make a diagnosis now this is the seborrheic keratosis if you see microscopically you will see that uh, very important you have pseudo horn cysts so these are the presence of pseudo horn cysts 
okay and very important there is a thickness of the epithelium that is acanthosis is most frequent over here okay very important and there are interspersed pseudohonces which are characteristic feature of seborrheic keratosis then there are other uh, important uh, you know differential diagnosis of melanoma like the basal cell melanoma if you see very importantly a basal cell if you see uh, grossly they have a translucent to fleshy appearance tiny blood vessel on the surface will be see sometimes ulceration as you can see over here can be characteristic okay the key to diagnosis is a translucent lesion pearly translucent lesion as we can appreciate over here squamous cell carcinoma they are more aggressive they will have a very important dark red crusted ulcer patch bump will be there very rapidly growing and pain is one of the important characteristic of scc malignant melanoma if you see is an asymmetrical area irregular border color variation often greater than 6 mm in diameter now there is something called as a pigmented basal cell carcinoma so sometimes basal cell carcinoma can have a pigmented appearance but if you see under the slide the basal cell carcinoma remember melanin can be present in the melan macrophages located in the stroma between the tumor lobules this is a pigmented variety but if you see the individual tumor cells they are looking like the basal cell carcinoma cells small basaloid cells can be seen now coming to the immunohistochemistry for melanoma all markers listed only can differentiate a normal or a neoplastic melanoma from other cell type but they cannot separate the benign from malignant okay melanin stains the stains that we use they are silver based and they rely on the reducing property of melanin granules now two main utilities are detection of finely dispersed melanin granules that are not immediately apparent or very important uh, that the brown pigment seen on routine segment whether it is melanin or it is hemosiderin so that is the main utility of carrying out this so these are the important markers as 100 it is not specific but negative in many tumors that come in dd so that is why it helps in the differential diagnosis hmb 45 is very specific melane again detected by this and very specific now detection of tyrosinase by ihc can be done mitf uh, another nuclear protein which you can use for detection sox stain in addition uh, stains myoepithelial cells other stains are smf1 pnl2 mage1 nsf so for exam purpose this hmb 45 as 100 and melane at least remember these for your exam purpose these three are important markers of melanoma so you can see over here the mel melanoma of a skin immune stain for s100 is a strong nuclear and cytoplasmic reactivity of s100 again we can see the hmb 45 cytoplasmic reactivity also over here okay so with this we have discussed in details about all the important features of malignant melanoma including the molecular pathogenesis the site the types the morphology the prognosis and the immunohistochemistry thank you very much for watching this